What's up guys? Uh, so one answer to a uh, question, how do you get a jazzy sound when you're improvising? One, one answer is um, that someone says that you play arpeggios up and scale down. Uh, this is of course very simplified, but uh, there is some truth to it. So, so what I've done is that I've taken a song, um, I wrote a book, Jazz Standard Song, and uh, written kind of a solo that really focuses on doing just that. Uh, what you'll see if you study it is that it's not strictly arpeggios up and, uh, and scale down. Uh, first of all, most lines are a combination of, of scale-wise movement and, and you know third movement, uh, th moving in thirds, which is arpeggios. Um, and uh, when we say scale down, you could just as well say chromatics down. It's 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 very seldom a scale uh, movement without some chromatics in it for jazz anyway. So so that's what it is. It's uh, this uh, yeah this solo that I've written is is one round on the song. I I, uh, I could write a book and. And a lot of it is arpeggios up and then scales down with some chromatics or scales with chromatics and also some other movement. It's not going straight down most of the time. It's, it's doing something in between there. But we talk about that. Uh, what you should do is just learn it as it's written, you know, because that, that's going to give you some uh, some jazz lines, you know, in your vocabulary. And, and, you can, and then you can... You can sit with them and you know tweak them a little bit here and there, but you can also just use them. You know, it's it's standard. Everybody plays these lines. Every jazz musician plays these lines. So you know, it's, it's uh, just the language of jazz. You know, <laughs> so um, yeah, just play it as is, and, and then um, yeah, it's a more musical approach than learning all all the arpeggios and all the scales and just playing that up and down. It's not going to be very musical. So let me just play through it for you and then we will break it down uh, after that. Okay, so that's it. It's very, you know, very typical jazz line. So let's just go through it from bar number one. Um, so the first thing there is an arpeggio. Okay, C major. Going all the way up to ninth. And then we have basically... Uh, a diagonal position scale with some chromatics. That last one there, see, we're not going straight down all the time. We can do stuff like this. Um, it's a C major scale, so you know, you can sit down and figure out which of these notes are chromatics and which are the C major scale. <laughs> um, Bar number five. So it uh, starts with C major arpeggio. Chromatics. Uh, bar number six. Still C major scale with chromatic notes. So this is uh, the chord there is C sharp diminished. In, in this context, this C sharp diminished is really functioning in, uh, as an A dominant chord. So it's like an A7 flat 9 leading to D minor. So that's uh, or an arpeggio. You could see it as a diminished arpeggio or 
or I see it just as in kind of an A7 flat, flat nine thing. So next bar, arpeggio up, D minor triad actually, and enclosure targeting this G here. So it's half step above, half step below to G and chromatic down to the 13 of E. Okay, so that line is from um, bar 7. Okay, uh, bar 9. So this is on C and it's kind of like just a C6 triad. Chromatic on the A flat 7 chord. And then the same way down. You can see this as an A minor triad or C6, right? And uh, see next bar, bar number 11. So this is kind of following the chords. It's an A minor first. You see A minor, C major, same thing. Uh, and scale down on the D7. It's it's common common movement. You know, it's like like a, 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 well, you could call it a, a G uh, kind of G harmonic minor if you want. But it's just the third on the D7 and then flat nine, right? And then we have G major seven. And on B7 we play an altered. Um, arpeggio. So from bar number nine, let's do that. It's uh, one, two, three, four, one. So this is really outlining the chords. I, I usually, you know, I don't Mickey Mouse the chords as much as this usually, usually, but you know, it's nice sometimes. And then on the E minor 7 on bar 13. Oh. You know, so common jazz line. And, you know, to talk about the theory of what this is, you know, it kind of just doesn't make sense, you know. Okay, okay, we're using the major 7th in there on a minor chord. So, you know, we could say that we're using the melodic minor, but you just... You know, if you have that line in your fingers and, and in your, you know, in your ear, uh, you know. You know, that's that line. You give it a name, call it, you know, Alfred or something. Um, next bar. On A minor 7. Uh, to D7. And then we move. Uh, this is... Um, um, you know some harmonic stuff that you should be aware of that we're going from D7 to D minor 7 this this is the note that kind of changes the F sharp going to F so 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 the next line is kind of a response to uh, yeah <coughs> um, so again arpeggio up chromatics down and some arpeggio again going down. So it, you know, as I said, it's not strictly arpeggios up and scales down. Uh, it's it's just maybe you know a tendency, <laughs> but it, it's most of the time combinations. Now bar number seventeen, very common again jazz line. So it's starting with kind of scale things. Arpeggio, okay, so scale movement. Thirds. Uh, chromatics down. And then for bar number 19. So this is. Um, look at bar number 19. Again, some, some common thing, you know, take a figure like this. And move it chromatically. This this note on the bottom I could just as easily be now going down a minor third. Could be a major third. 
or a second. Right? It doesn't really, you know, it, none of them are wrong and none of them are right. So it's just a matter of taste or, or variation, okay? Last part of, uh, of bar number 20. So on G7, you can see this is F major, F major 7 arpeggio, which is very common, you know. On a 7th chord you could play the uh, arpeggio, uh, major 7 arpeggio one step down. So on G7, F major 7 arpeggio. Uh, again, chromatics from next bar. Bar 22. So now, uh, if you see uh, the chords on that bar, it's first C major seven and then C sharp diminished. So I'm 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 doing it. Uh, the line is not following the chords so closely that I'm waiting for beat number three to play that uh, to play that um, diminished arpeggio. You know, it's for me uh, all of this this bar is it, it's leading into D mi minor. So, so if it comes a little bit before or a little bit after, you know, yeah, we, we can't be too, um, too, too uh, hung up on following the chord changes exactly. If you did that, you wouldn't create any tension anyway, and you know, it wouldn't be. <laughs> the chords are happening beneath you, so you can pretty much do what you want on top of them. You know, you can create tension, you can follow them closely, or. Um, no, you know, you can play out, you know, anything. Um, and you'll see, see, you know, uh, the way that this scale is descending here is kind of similar to the way we've done it before, but not quite, okay? So there are some variations there, but um, yeah, it, you, you play, it's not like every bar you play is something you've never played before at all, you know? <clears throat> Next bar, number 25. Taking a step back, back from playing eighth note all the time here. So it's a simple line. So this is arpeggio, um, but you see we kind of skip one step. Okay? We're not playing that, we're playing. Which uh, is something to take note of. It's, it's cool too. It's uh, so common to play arpeggios, you know, all the way, but you don't really need all of that. You can play, yeah, just a simple line like that. Uh, and th then we go to bar number 27. Now we change kind of keys, going from A minor to G minor C7 to F major 7. So that's, you could say it's changing to F major. Um, or if you want to look at it as uh, G, maybe G minor with, you know, natural 6, G Dorian. So that's the line, and it's basically, um, it's that scale, but in a different position maybe than you're used to, and with one chromatic note, ending with F major arpeggio, triad. And then we have that F minor to B flat 7. So it's, it's this note here that changes, the F major uh, uh, a third. Uh, minor, B flat 7, basically the same thing. Uh, and then for the last four bars uh, from 29, it's just so common turnaround. C, A, D minor, G7, C. So we're playing third of A7, D minor, arpeggio, and then I'm altering the G7 on the way down. Okay? So um, I suppose for many it's it's kind of it's too complicated to follow all the theory I'm saying here. And that's perfectly fine. It's you know I'd rather you didn't understand any of it and and just played the the thing you know <laughs> and, and uh, learn it as this and then and you know then pick out segments of it and play around with it and, and practice. Uh, improvising and then using that segment in the solo somewhere and try to make it fit and um, what will happen eventually is that 
uh, your fingers is teaching your ear this. And, and then when those two are properly connected, you'll just hear it in your head and then you'll be able to play it. Okay, so you know that's the goal here. <laughs> to 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 um, uh, well to improvise and, and use this stuff, okay? <laughs> the thing so have fun with it and uh, good luck bye bye okay so if you like that lesson you should check out mortenslessons.com there's like you know 400 or so jazz guitar lessons there um, and if you like the backing track you can check out dynamicbackingtracks.com you'll find a lot of uh, backing tracks like this with um, 10 different mixes actually for each of the standards uh, so so you get you know you can practice soloing or comping or bass or drums or guitar and piano, saxophone, trumpet, whatever you want to practice, you'll find tracks for it there. So um, yeah.